So the same thing applies to ACDC. Since we're on the subject of ACDC, then this is very few people know what Angus and Malcolm were like. They know what they're like as performers, they know their music, they understand their guitar playing, but what were they really like as people? And you touch on that in the book. Can you describe a little bit of that for us now? Sure. Um, well, most of you probably know that they come with that great sort of influx of people from Scotland. From a pub. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they are, they, their reputation now is that they're very insular and, and, and closed off. And, and I, that was, from the moment I first met the guys, that's pretty much how they are. They're, 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 they, are, they, are they are very, uh, to meet them, uh, they, they, are, they, they tend to be, um, oh boy, so insular, but they, they tend to be suspicious. They tend to be suspicious until you earn your stripes. And then once you get through that outer core, they are actually quite warm guys to a point. Uh, but uh, the way uh, the, the, the band runs, which is basically, a, a, that's what you're alluding to, how they, I guess they have the running the band. Uh, they are, um, there's no room uh, to, to um, run any other way in that band other than according to how Malcolm and Angus wish it to run. So it was not a democracy? Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know any band that is a, a democracy. Is your, should your band wouldn't be a democracy. No, I'm afraid it wasn't. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 don't, I don't think any band is a, is a, a, a democratic beast. I, I, I think any band that is democratic will probably fall. Or by the wayside. But the, the thing with, with Angus and Malcolm, the, 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 the thing that, that sticks with me most is that those guys, um, I just solidly believe those guys were put on, on this earth to be in that band. Um, they, they, they're, they're, they're driven individuals. They are, uh, you know, all, all, all regards to our guitar players in the room that I can see, those guys are just absolutely amazing guitar players and that they have a, a vision they had and i'm talking about the period where i was with the band they had a vision uh, of what they wanted to do and what they wanted to succeed um and they did exactly what they set out to do they, they, they wanted to play in the biggest rock and roll band in the world and i think you could probably make a good case that they are in, in fact that you know and more power to them. I've got a lot of respect for the guys. I've got a lot of respect for the guys. I, I learned a lot from them, and I also learned a, a, a lot from um, one of their other brothers, George Young, who I know you know of. Uh, George ran Albert's Productions, and he was uh, produced all those records, produced great bands. I produced your band, Rose Tattoo, some you know some other fluffy stuff. Seemed <laughs> right, but um, you know George. George was the prototype for Angus and Malcolm. Uh, George was the one that did the stuff with the easy beats, that laid all the groundwork, made all the mistakes with the easy beats, that if George made sure we didn't make the same mistakes at the easy beats. George took all, all, all the potholes out of the road for us. Uh, and along with George and with Albert's Productions and then linking up with Michael Browning, um, uh, our manager at the time, it all came together around the time of the first album. And it just, I don't, it wasn't planned. Oh, it was planned as much as you could plan a band and release of an album. But, but with all those things coming together, it, it, it just, the whole thing just exploded. But the, the yeah, but, but you ask about Angus and Malcolm, they were from a very, very staunch Scottish background. Uh, stoic, I, I think would would, uh, would be a good word to use them. But, I think a lot of their energies, when I was with them, went into the band. And I think they probably ran their batteries down for other areas in their life where they weren't maybe so good at. But what, what, they, were, what they are amazing at is being the guitar players in ACDC. I've got nothing but respect for them. I hear that, but I guess, you know, one thing that really gets me curious about, because we all know how fabulous they are, and you know, I wish I could play rhythm guitar like Malcolm, I wish I was that short, but um, do, what were they like at home, you know, like, <laughs> did you ever hang with them and talk shit with them, you know, like, what did they talk about, what did they think, you know, on a personal level, the stuff that we wouldn't even normally think about, I mean, 
you know, Twitter group. Tell us. I can't answer what they were like at home because we didn't have a home. <coughs> and we, we the were bus? Just, what about the bus? Well, 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 no, what happens on the bus stays on the bus, mate. <laughs> that bus, oh my God. They could have used it in an IVF program. Um, <laughs> did I say that? <laughs> or was, it, was, that was, was that one of the things you, you actually think but actually comes out? You said that, yeah. Oh, I was, I was, I you always that. say what you think. I, 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 hopefully. Um, okay, let's let's just move off the uh, the young brothers. Of course, the young brothers are extremely important because they're the they're the uh, they're the drink away. They're the engine of choir boys. They're the the uh, unsung heroes, of, of, except of course for uh, Angus and his antics on stage. Um, even though he's starting to wind down a little bit, I think his knees are getting a bit old now. Aren't you? Well, how old is he now? Uh, Angus is a, a year older than me, which would make him fifty six now. Fifty six. Yeah, I, I've um. I, I was really looking forward to going to see them last time they were out, uh, and but un unfortunately, um, I I remember what happened. Well, I wasn't at the gig. I was down in, in Melbourne with, with, with Graham, and um, I heard a description of Angus, which, which is stuck with me, which knocked me out. I was talking to one of the pals. Oh, when I saw it at ACDC, and I said, "Yeah, Angus looked like Mr. Burns from The Simpsons." <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was all unkind. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, that's he, he, he's always been um, slightly built, and I, I think he's slowed down a tad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, for goodness' sake, you, we're talking a 56-year-old schoolboy here. You know. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's a dichotomy. Um, yes. Let's <laughs> let's move to the other guy. You know the you know the other guy, the singer in the band. What was his oh, name? Yeah. Bon Scott. Yeah. And the first time that you really met Bon Scott, I mean, you'd seen him on stage prior to this, but when you uh, went to the first show that you saw ACDC playing at, and what was Bon doing when you walked in? Uh, well, that was at the Station Hotel in, in, in Paran, over the favourite watering hole. I saw some great bands down there too. Um, but uh, I, I was meeting up with my friend Graham and, and, and another friend of ours, Mickey, our drummer, and uh, we said, listen, I've been off at this gig, got to come down and see these guys. And I met them there, but I was the first to get there. And, and besides getting thrown out in the street on, on my ass, because I'd been barred the Saturday night before, um, uh, that was that was one thing. Uh, we had a female radical called Tana that saved my ass. She said, oh, he, he's in the band. I wasn't in the band at the stage. But she got me back in. And Bon, I knew Bon, I, I, I knew, knew of his history, but the first vision I had of Bon, because I, I actually hadn't met the guy yet, was he was stand, standing at the bar ironing a pair of red satin overalls. At the bar. And I went, oh man, this is great. It's Bon Scott. You know. So I walked up and I said, hey Bon, how you doing? And he just looked up and said, what do you like at ironing, mate? <laughs> and, and, and just gave me the iron. And so he's gone at the end of the bar. It's two, two beers and two scotches. I'm like, how cool is this? I'm going to be drinking with Bon Scott. Brought straight steps down and sat with the best sword in the joint, and I'm standing there with the iron. Like, <laughs> so did you iron it? No, I wasn't going to do that. Although, although I am a dab hand at ironing, let me tell you. I'm very good. Virginia will tell you that. Very good. Uh, yeah, so that was my first thing. He asked me if I could iron. But it was, it, was, it was sort of okay after that, the first gig I did with them at the uh, Ross and Matilda. We were sort of all guns blazing, making plenty of noise, playing to 15 people. And he's he, he making the moves, he'd come up next to me and said, You're doing well, Mike. <laughs> that was it. Did he always call you Mike or did he figure it out after a while? No, no, he, or was he, that just a nickname for you? No. No, 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 he, he, got, he got that after a while, but, um, you know, actually, probably one of the, the, the main things, uh, the main um, motivation, one of the main motivations for, for embarking and, and writing Dirty Deeds was um, the amount of times that we're doing gigs, you know, doing gigs with different bands, and uh, people would, would come up and say, man, what was Bond like? And, you know, I've been asked that, and they're like, what was it like being on the road with ACDC? And, and that was, that's what this book started out of, was it started about my experiences in ACDC. 
um, it, it, it grew either side to, in, into the memoir that it is now. But uh, it, it's my way of, of like just you know giving something back to those punters that to a man over the years have always been so genuine and come up and asked about, about the history of the band or what was this, what was like that, and then um, to just put some you know idea in people's heads a bit more about what Bomb was like. Uh, Bomb was a, uh, a, you know, one, even himself, he, he mentioned he was a great bunch of guys. There was, Bond really felt uh, a, a very strong duty and responsibility to his image of, of Bond Scott, that, that guy that we, that we see, we think is Bond. Well, that was one part of Bond, that was Bond um, after quite a few scotches and a lot of other things under his belt to, to get up to that stage where he would become Bond on stage. But off stage he was, he was, he looked like a rocker, but there was a hippie in there. There was like captains and sandals underneath all that other stuff, you know. Uh, he was a, a very, uh, the guy had impeccable manners. And, uh, but along with that, he had this seriously, um, seriously naughty side to him where it just, women loved him. It just, it just, he, he could captivate women because he was such a naughty boy and, and they're attracted. You, you, you know that. You've been a naughty boy in the past, right? <laughs> yeah, don't deny it. There have been moments. Yeah. But that, that was the thing with Bond. He was, he was, um, he felt that responsibility in his image uh, and he, w he was very, very aware of his limits. Uh, he gave those limits a severe pushing over the years and unfortunately come unstuck in the end. Uh, but um, yeah, it, it was, that was like I said, that was one of the, the, the motivations to put, to, put, put, put people on the inside and, and flesh out the, the bones of that band in the formative years because, you know, there, there's so little that, that, that I've seen written about the band that actually captured the atmosphere and that captured the times that, of, of how I knew it. And how I knew from inside the band is, is very different different from the, the public perception of the band. So, I mean